Okay, I need to shoot a video before I get too far. I always just get heads down and don't ever, don't ever document what I do, and then I forget. So this is mostly for me, but if someone else finds it useful, then that'd be great. Um, so I wanted to do a rear drum to disc conversion on a third gen 4Runner. This is off of a 2000 4Runner. Um, I did go run out and source a bunch of junkyard parts. Um, the axle housing is from Arizona from a 2001. Uh, I think this guy's from a 2000, just a generic open third member 410 gear. I'll use it as a core charge. The pinion bearing is bad in it. You can, it's <laughs> no good. Um, but I needed it to make sure that, that the axles were centered because it's key when you, um, you need the axle to be in the spot where it's going to be because when you compress the caliper, it's going to tell you where it wants to be in relation to the bracket that you're going to make. Um, you can see right now, we're actually right in here. We're grinding just a little bit on this side. Um, and it turns out that two washers are almost perfect. About one and a half washers would be perfect. So the last thing I really have to do to get the spacing correct on both of these, both my brackets, is to probably just grind down one of the washers to about half height, and then I'm going to JB weld them onto here, and then I'll uh, wire brush them and put a coat of rattle can on here and um, uh, and make sure they get protected so they don't get all rusty. Um, other than that, um, I pretty much have it figured out. Um, I did put, so I got some axles out of a 2001. We just pulled them out up from the junkyard. I cleaned up the axles. I replaced the gasket, this backing plate. I cleaned these guys off the bearing cups and did a um, put some cold galvanizing kelp compound on it. Not really that happy with it. It's really soft. It comes off real easy, but these things are always rusted, so anything will help. I can maybe rattle can if I want. I also replaced these four bolts and. The reason I replaced them, these are still old ones over here. Um, as you can hopefully see down here, let's get in here and take a look at this. With a 3 8 inch thick piece of steel, it actually comes out perfect. Um, right to the end and you get grab on all the threads, which I'm really happy with. I didn't have to, I can use the stock Toyota um, M10125s. Um, they're kind of like a serrated, uh, basically like a wheel stud that goes through here. It really helps center the axle. Um, I didn't want to put great big long bolts in here, so I was able to reuse these ones, so I decided to grab new ones. I also replaced the stock Toyota uh, nuts on these bolts um, with some 15 millimeter that are <clears throat> just automotive grade, um, and they look... They look like this with the the serrate, serrated locking on the back of the, the flare, uh, or I think they're called flange nuts. Um, and the reason I did that, usually these would be 12, now they're 15 millimeters, but I'm okay with that because now um, I did actually test. The reason this guy's short right here is because I actually put a washer behind him. So when I put new ones in, I'm not going to put washers behind them. The new brake calipers are 15 millimeters, and all four of these are going to be 15 millimeters. It doesn't really change the torque spec, I don't think. Um, so I think it's like 48 foot pounds or something like that. So that way, I get a good, a good bite on all these guys. I'll replace all these. I'm gonna, I will put a washer on the one um, <clears throat> stud that comes through, the bolt that comes through that doesn't, so it doesn't tear up the axle assembly. Um, there's a lot of people who have done rear Toyota rear drum to disc brake conversions. There's a couple things that I used as criteria for my conversion. Um, number one was I didn't want to grind or modify or weld on the axle housing. I like to be able to undo my modifications if I need to. Um, and I just didn't feel like I wanted to destroy the truck quite that far yet <laughs> maybe maybe someday but it's still pretty nice and so I now I have two whole complete sets of axles. I haven't this is since this is 
off a completely different truck. I still have my stock axle assembly with my drum brakes already on, so I can actually go back to it at some point. Um, and I did put brand new, brand new, rebuilt this, these both these axles that I pulled out. Um, this is all new components in here. Um, there's a part number for those uh, M10125s. And I, I even put new wheel studs in there. Those are the wheel studs. Bolt hub, genuine parts. Um, just when I'm doing it, I might as well do all new stuff. Um, I also used fourth gen rotors. Uh, I think I just used 2005 as a year to pull the parts. Um, I used the Napa rotors. Uh, sorry, the Napa calipers. Um, those are the part numbers on those guys. These are just off the 94 to, I think, 2002 um, Ford Mustang GT. Um, the important part is they have the, the e-brake provision on here, and hopefully I will get later on. I'll shoot another video when I, when I get to this part. I tried to make this nice. It was my one criteria as well as being don't grind or weld. Um, be able to use off-the-shelf parts so that I could undo it if I had to and preserve the e-brake function on the truck because it is a law you do have to have it. If you don't have it and you're driving on the road, you're breaking the law. If you were to hit somebody and they were to sue you, you could lose everything that you own. So that's one of my criteria on that guy as well. These are the caliper mounting bolts um, made in China. Um, brake bass came from uh, O'Reilly or something like that. And these are the part numbers on that guy. These are the part numbers on the pads I used. You can use any pad, obviously. Um, they came from Canada, so they must be really nice, happy brake pads. Um, I'm also going to put, and I've been using these now for a while. I really like these stupid paper deals. I bought like 10 of them at one point. I think I'm almost out of them. <clears throat> um, I'll probably just use this one of these guys as a pattern and cut a bunch of them myself, but to go between the wheel and the uh, whatever your brake, your drum and the, and I'm going to do between the actual axle and the um, rotor, this way they don't ever get stuck and they come right off. And when you get your trucks new from Toyota, they have these on it and no one ever puts new ones on, but, and I never used to either, but I've been using them now. Um, the brackets, Let's talk about brackets a little bit. So I mocked up a bracket um, out of eighth inch hardboard. Just it's a little bit tougher than uh, cardboard, and it just made it a little bit easier to make sure I had the mounting points. Then I made one the same thickness of the steel, uh, three eighths, uh, and then I went out and grabbed um, four. Uh, I only needed two, but I figured, hey, that I could screw up twice, and I didn't screw up at all, so that was good news. Um, so this is 8 inches by 6 inches, uh, 836, 3 8 inch thick steel. I think that's plenty good for brake brackets. Um, I will put a link to, someone actually did um, a pretty extensive study on the thickness of this material, and uh, this exact conversion from the University of Washington, I believe, and they did a terrific job. I'm 100% I'm sure that this bracket that I made is safe now um, and conforms to what I would consider as the automotive engineering science part of it which I think is good news um, to grind um, I, I really don't have a lot of fabrication in my shop I'm more of a woodworker but between my stupid cheap little 30 inch Harbor Freight grinder um, I do have a 12 inch and a spindle sander I use both of those a little bit um, I did use my bench top eight inch grinder a little bit um, and just a little four and a half inch cutoff wheel. And I did go through, uh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, like five, <coughs> excuse me. I did go through five uh, cutoff wheels just to kind of grind out shape. So there was a little bit of money involved there. Um, I'm gonna mount up my, I can't, I'm just filming with one hand. I'm gonna mount up this other axle and we'll get it in there and I'll show you the bracket and how they how it fits on there. Um, and maybe I'll walk you through um, how I figured out, which was actually really the most challenging part of it. F figuring out these 
mounting points was really not hard because I had a spare bearing cup and it was really easy just to use this to transfer onto the steel using the template and I was able to get these babies right on and I used a try to look I can't see anymore um, I used a 27 64ths which was perfect for these four bolts that do the bearing cup to the axle housing and then for the brake brackets I used a 15 30 seconds which also worked absolutely perfect um, for these uh, caliper mounting bolts which are 15 millimeters and those are genuine Ford parts so I think that kind of covers I think um, the, the parts that I used um, and let me let me go ahead and I'll get this put up and we'll come back and I'll, I'll show you how the, the brackets fit on there and then kind of how I, I spaced out those spaced out figured out where I wanted the, the calipers all right grab the tripod hopefully this will be a little bit easier So I'm, I'll show you how this, how the bracket mounts before I actually, it doesn't really matter, I can put the caliper on <clears throat> in a little bit. Um, so it slides on here and I used kind of, I mean, it's, it's really solid on here and it was a little bit of doing, <laughs> a little bit of grinding to get that to work. Um, on the insides of these, there's kind of these recesses in here that are machined nice down. Um, and I did exactly the same thing. Um, and so I just recessed, really, if you get really close and I just recess and they kind of grab on to those corners. Um, once it goes on and you seat it and make sure it's it's down. I didn't use washers or anything. They're all nice and flat on those machine surfaces. And this this bracket is really solid. Um, once we add these 15 millimeter bolts on here. Get all three of them going. And like I said before, Um, those guys right to the end really nice uh, I think I just used I think an M yeah an M12 washer actually fits into the recess so when they machined it they machined it to be actually I used this guy to do some this guy did not. So those uh, M12 washers seat into that pocket just perfect. Um, I'm not going to torque these guys down. I'm just going to snug them up. But that's perfect right on the end you get a bite on all the threads inside the bolt that's really nice and solid it's nice and straight the other thing that's nice is the fourth gen rotors sit sit down on the wheel studs just perfect they they mount nice and tight you don't have to drill out the insides of these hats at all of the rotors <clears throat> i'm just gonna use a couple 
Oh, guys, I think you do need to. Maybe not. I'm going to use a couple of lug nuts to hold this on here. Nice and solid. So, I need my caliper. So, figuring out where these guys go, this is how I ended up doing it. Um, I used a clamp to compress. Um, probably would have been best to shoot some compressed air in here to make it compress, but a clamp on the outside of this guy, on this outside pad and over here, is going to essentially do the same thing. Um, I used a washer up on top and on the bottom. I'm not going to do it because I <clears throat> it's going to drop because <laughs> um, I don't have a clamp on there right now. But you can imagine I spaced it up so it's not so the caliper itself is not dragging on the top of the rotor. Then I used these M12 washers, which are almost exactly the same size as the mounting point and now this is the really advanced tricky part I put double stick tape on the back of this and basically once I had the caliper clamped on to the rotor where I wanted it and it was spaced out correctly with the with the correct clearances for the pads the pads were all centered everything was cool I just slipped this guy in here and just used a utility knife to basically push it up against this my brake bracket that I made and to figure out the exact right spot and it, it worked perfect on it was just kind of a pain to do it um, but that was how I was able to figure out where the caliper mounting bolts were uh, were supposed to go so I'm gonna get these ones figured out I'll get them drilled uh, I'm gonna grind away um, a couple of these M10 or M12 washers about halfway gone I think my space is gonna be right um, and then I'll get these guys rattle canned up and then I'll go through an assembly. Um, and I think the next step is really is just going through what I did for the with, for the brake lines. Um, I, I'm not really going to deviate. I'm just going to run the stock brake lines down here. I will have to do a custom flare to the banjo fitting that goes on the back of this Ford caliper. Um, and then for the e-brake, I think I'm just going to order right now. It looks like I'm just going to order. And part of the reason why I mounted the caliper on the back side down here, number one, the bleed, you want the bleed to be up on top. And number two, there's actually a, a mounting point for the Ford uh, brake cables that go through here, which should, I think, go right underneath the axle and be able to go right up the lower control arms on top um, and hopefully I can run a cable from each side and then I don't have to have a 90 degree so I don't know I'm gonna try it a couple different ways and I'll shoot a video once I get to that point but that's basically how I figured out how these how where the calipers go, are gonna go I thought I was gonna be really hard and it was kind of a pain but with really a couple little, with some <laughs> double-sided tape um, it was really easy to locate those bol those bolts, and you want them to be right on because the tolerances need to be pretty close. Um, you don't have a whole lot of room on the road or with the pads. So ever forward. So I needed to shoot another video before I get too far, and this is probably all I'm going to shoot on, on the brake lines. They're actually um, pretty easy. Um, I'll start from the inside out. <clears throat> um, I replaced this three-way up here. There are, I think, about three different configurations of brake lines, so this is for a limited uh, a 2000. Um, that three-way uh, part number is right there with those um, M1010 fittings on it. So then I grab the, um, these are only like 20 bucks a piece the, at the dealer, so I'm guessing you might be able to find them online even cheaper. 
um, the left and right um, hard lines that ran to the drum brakes. Um, and so I just grabbed both those. Uh, this one's brake line number six on the parts diagram. That's what that part number is for the left side. And you can see I haven't cut this one off yet. Um, and I, what I did, I'll show you on the other one. Um, and then I did just stop at a local brake line shop and have them um, make me a couple of 16 inch. Uh, 16 inch seems to be a good, I know you can get um, these exact lines from Curry um, online for, <clears throat> I think, um, uh, for like muscle or for Mustang uh, disc brake conversions um, as well. But so <clears throat> this consists of a 10 by 10 millimeter uh, banjo fitting. I did get a kind of an angled one um, and then a 16 inch piece of line and then an M M1010 um, female connector on this side which will thread right into this and here I'll show you on the other side. Um, and then the other, the passenger side part number, it's kind of torn apart but we can get the whole thing um, at 4732535528 and that last one is a 2 and this is um, brake line number five on the parts diagram and so this just follows that stock uh, mounted there crossed here and it's mounted under there and so then I just I cut cut it off and then just and did a 90 on here um, and then these two that stock connection um, with that new flare uh, position that's what that looks like with this new guy I, I might I mean, this is it's pretty good. It moves a little bit. I'm, I might have to fabricate a bracket up off here, but I, I tried to get this in the right spot. So, so really, if I had to fabricate a bracket for this connection right here, I, I could. I think it's going to be okay. Um, coming along slow. It is a lot of work. Um, so once I get that completed, I'm just going to take this guy um, and cut him off down here. Um, actually, I probably am going to straighten this out, which is kind of a pain. I'm probably going to cut it here, straighten it out, um, and then put the connection here. And then this guy will look just like the other side, where it'll, it'll just kind of curl around from the back. Um, I would have to say, too, I, I picked up a new toy. Um, these K bar got it off Amazon. They're about 200 bucks or like 199, so close to 200. About as close as you can get. Um, they're really nice. Um, it totally destroys that old crappy one you can rent at the auto parts store. I've used that one a bunch of times. I don't know if I saved any. I was messing around with the yeah, that other old flare connector. One of the things I don't like about it is the clamp. Kind of rips apart when you go to use it it kind of rips apart the the steel line because it, it's so thin and it has grooves on it to hang on to the brake line while you're flaring it and then they get all rusty up in here but um, you can see I flared this one with the new tool and it it does a really nice job and it doesn't doesn't really destroy that coating that uh, Toyota puts on their stock brake line so hopefully that'll be a, a better deal um, and then after that, I guess I need to figure out the e-brakes, but that's going to be a little bit because it's like one degree in Minnesota right now. But so far, all the clearances look good. Everything's great. Um, I did modify my plan from before. Oh, I should mention it. This is a four millimeter shim, so I just took some stock and... and sanded it down to about four millimeters and drilled a hole in the center of it so then there's some steel spacers instead of washers washers i mean it's still kind of a pain the uh having washers falling all over the place when there's a couple two or three of them or something this way i can consistently control that offset and that centers the rotor really nice on there and there's no rubbing whatsoever on either of those and the clearance on the 16 inch wheels that come with a lot of four runners so if you have 16 inch wheels I don't think it might work with 15s but I'm, I'm pretty sure it would work with most of the 16s all right and then I'll come back and shoot a little video when I do the e-brake <laughs> 